Leaf Podcast. My name is Carmen and this is my podcast about knitting and crochet and my journey to becoming a full-time knitwear and crochet designer. You can find me on Instagram as newleafdesigns.nl and also on my website newleafdesigns.nl. Um, and of course you can find me in other places and I will list those right here. We also have a Ravelry group for the podcast with several cows and mouths running at the moment. For example, the Chevrainbow cow, which is uh, a crochet blanket cow. And uh, that is running until February the 1st. And we also have the Scapius Folk Along, which is a... Um, make along so you can knit or crochet um or sew are they sewing projects in there i think there is one that incorporates sewing so um yeah you can just make along with us and uh, comment on each other's projects in the thread which is really nice and um yeah i'm really enjoying that now um, so I have already uh, published a separate video on all of the goodies I have assembled the last couple of weeks. Um, it was quite extensive, so I decided to just do a separate video, which is up on my YouTube channel, and it's called Wooly Goodies Video, uh, or Woody, Wooly, <laughs> Wooly Goodies Vlog. Um, yeah, and I hope you like it. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> um, so in this podcast episode, I have um, I am going to talk about all the projects I have worked on in the last two weeks, and there they are quite a lot. So I'm quite pleased with myself because, well, I might have just worked a little bit on each project, and most of them are quite small, but. Um, Still, you know, um, I uh, I also did some paper crafting, uh, which I showed in the intro. I made this little bunting, which says "Have yourself a merry little Christmas." I um, made two little buntings, and um, I also filmed one from last year. Uh, yeah, we had a really a lot of fun decorating our house for Christmas. First up is actually a finished object from uh, last time. But now I have blocked them and they look so much better. So I thought I would show them to you again. They are the madly in love socks that I am that I have knit for a work friend of mine. And I think they're so pretty. And I really like how the color work looks when blocked because it really makes all of the difference. And I can really feel the, um, um, how do you say this, a strengthened toe. Um, because this is the, um, it's long yarn. It's, I believe it's called long ya wool. And it comes with this little spool of reinforcement thread uh, I think it's pure nylon, I think, the this little spool. So you can uh, knit it uh, double with, with your yarn and it has exactly the same color so that's totally invisible. And I use it for uh, both of the toes. Uh, I wanted to use it for the heel but I wasn't sure if I was going to have enough because I think it's only meant to be used for the toe and then if I would use it on one heel and then maybe not have enough for the toe for the other toe or not enough for the second heel then I would be kind of a bummer so I decided not to use it on the heel um, I'd be uh, interested to know if someone has tried that to use the reinforcement thread for both toes and heels uh, and if you had enough. So if you know, please tell me. Yes, I like these. So the pattern is uh, my own design, uh, Madly in Love Socks. Um, I came up with the name because the original pair of socks what the yarn for that was hand dyed with matter and yeah i thought it was a nice little pun um for matter so 
yeah and the color work looks like little hearts so there's that as well um, yeah quite pleased with those I'm going to gift them very soon so I'm excited for that and as I showed you last time I uh, finished a hat the mithril beanie it's right there um, and I was I had knit that for another friend of mine who um, is going through breast cancer uh, uh, chemotherapy and I'm knitting her a second hat uh, which will be much warmer and softer than the first one that I knit uh, the first one uh, well y you might think okay why knit a hat that is not very warm then um, I wanted to knit a just a thin hat that will go on the top of her wig um, I mean on top of her wig um, because I can imagine that the wig is already quite warm so I decided to do just a thin uh, loose baggy hat to go on top of the wig and then one hat that um, she can wear directly on her skin and um, yeah, I chose alpaca fiber for that because um, I've heard that alpaca is hypoallergenic and is very, very soft. So yes, I got um, two skeins of alpaca DK yarn from Chestnut Cabin, which is a Dutch indie dyer. Um, and I think it's really, really pretty. And I got this yarn on sale. I think it was 12 euro for 100 grams and I got two of them. So that was really good value and she has some gorgeous skeins left in her shop. So please go ahead and take a look. And I'm knitting uh, the Tide Knots pattern by Justina Rokowska, who is Leeds Knits on Instagram. And I have some fun stitch markers as well. This little galaxy bauble is by Undercover Otter. And this cute little teacup is by Sucre Sucre Miniatures. And it's really cute. It has a sugar cube as well. Yeah, I'm really liking this pattern. Um, I'm trying to teach my sh teach my myself. <laughs> oh my god, teach myself to knit cables without a cable needle, which is um, uh, sometimes impossible if if I have to do purling in the cable. But uh, for. Uh, so far it's going quite well and it makes for a really speedy knitting process but I do have to look at the pattern every row um, because it's quite complex so and let me see if I can try it on for you because it's alpaca so it's quite stretchy so I've made it I've, I'm using smaller needles than the pattern says so I hope to make a slightly snugger hat because of course uh, my friend um, without a rig she doesn't have any hair right now so of course uh, it needs to be a little snugger but since alpaca stretches a lot it will also fit her hat you know when she has hair again so yeah I think it looks quite nice. Um, yeah, I hope she will like it. Um, and it's a very speedy project. A hat, you know, it's it's almost like magic. Um, how um, how quickly this grows, and um, there's a lovely soft halo uh, on the alpaca yarn beautiful so uh, I hope to have this finished soon and then I can get both hats sent off to her okay I have also done a little bit of work on my boy and bunting cow 
and uh, if you don't know Matt from A Boy and Bunting, you really should check out his YouTube channel and his blog because he is hilarious. Um, this is a colorway that he designed for Scapius and I really like it, kind of moody blues and purples. And this is the skein, it's Scapius Our Tribe. It's really pretty. I love these blues and purples. So yeah, I'm uh, crocheting a cowl and this is my own pattern. It's free up on my blog if you want to have a look. It's called the Timber Cowl and I've named it that way um, because there are lines across the cowl which are created if you only crochet in the back loop. And I thought those kind of look like age lines in trees. So I call it the timber cowl. So yeah, and I also have the pattern also includes a pair of mitts. So um, yeah, so you have a matching pair of fingerless mitts to go with this cowl. Um, yeah, it's just a nice quick make. Uh, well, I have been working on this for quite a while now, but um, it's just my on and off project. Uh, I like to work on it when I'm just sitting and chatting and it was nice. I had a crochet friend come over this week and um, yeah, I worked on this at the time. Another crochet project I've been working on is the Olga cardigan, which is a cardigan from uh, Yarnfolk magazine. Uh, so, um, Yarn is a bookazine by Scapius, and issue number six has just come out in October, um, and it includes, I think, 17 patterns, including two of mine. Um, and one of them is the Crochet Olga cardigan, uh, which features uh, filet crochet, and beautiful detail on the sleeves. So this is one sleeve and um, part of the body. <laughs> and I am working on the second sleeve right now. And uh, I had already done most of the second sleeve uh, last time, but since last time I had to rip back this whole thing and do it again because um, uh, the designer noticed that my stitch gun was off, so I had to redo that. So I'm super grateful for Susan letting me know that uh, I had to do it again because otherwise the pieces don't fit together. So, and here it's just this tiny little sliver of the body. Uh, but I just ran out of yarn, so I stopped there. Um, <laughs> yeah, so all of this, two complete sleeves and part of the body was all crocheted with just one cake of Scapey's Whirl. And I have two more, and I think I'm going to have plenty for the rest of uh, the cardigan and oh uh, I'm gonna show you my stitch marker on here as well because it's also a super cute one by Sucre Sucre Miniatures see it's lemon tea there's a little slice of lemon there and also two lumps of sugar really really cute and um, so this one, this little marker, I'm not sure what happened, but the top, the T, was sticky. So, and um, yeah, it was just st sticky and so I uh, put it away for a while, for a couple of weeks, but it didn't dry or anything, so I just put a co coat of uh, clear nail polish on it and it seems to have helped but um yeah i just would rather that i don't have to finish 
stitch markers myself, especially since they're quite expensive. But I know that, you know, it's super intricate to make and I'm really happy with mine. Um, but yeah, they, uh, the two teacups were packaged together and the tea from the lemon tea kind of rubbed off on the bottom uh, of the other. So yeah, I just wanted to put that out there, but I'm still really happy with them. Uh, yes, so this is the Olga cardigan. Um, I'm just uh, going to continue working on this and there are some super cute motifs um, along the front and then some more filet crochet and then um, the bottom of the uh, body, the hem, uh, also features this leafy motif. So I'm really excited and I think it's going to be super feminine and elegant and I hope I can pull it off. <laughs> okay, two, three more things at least. Okay. Another thing I've been working quite a bit on are my Christmas socks and I've almost finished them. I'm actually debating whether I should cast off right now or make the rib a little bit longer. So I am using, oops, oh, I keep dropping the yarn. Ah, oh, there we go again. So I'm using yarn from Nicole C. Mendes for both the contrast uh, as the main color. So the main color is Little Red Riding Hood, which also kind of looks like Scandinavian Christmas colors. So I thought it was really cute to do a pair of Christmas socks with them. Kind of got the idea from Amy from Stranded Podcast because she has an exact pair like this. Um, and here is my sock. So, and this mini is also from Nicole C. Mendes. I bought a whole set of uh, minis from her and this one was included. I'm just gonna pop it in here so it doesn't uh, drop again. And I'm wondering if I should just stop right now because, um, I don't know, I don't think a wide rib looks good with stripy socks yeah I'm on the fence about that and <laughs> I did a super tiny heel on these and I might have to re-knit this but I think I'm okay so usually my heels are really baggy uh, so I have tried to um, use less stitches so this was an afterthought heel and if you want to know how to do an afterthought heel, I have a tutorial here on my YouTube channel, um, which I've heard is very helpful. Thank you for all of your lovely feedback. And um, I've done, so usually, say I do a 60 uh, stitch sock, um, then I would do 30 stitches for the heel, just right smack dab in the middle, 30 stitches from the 60 stitches circumference. But now um, I tend to use, um, say 26 stitches for a 30 stitch, uh, for a 60 stitch sock. So just leave two stitches on either side, leave that to be um, the instep. Is this the instep? Like the top of the foot. Um, so I, I have a smaller heel, a smaller amount of stitches, which has worked out fine uh, for previous socks. But then for this one, I suddenly decided to use a smaller needle size as well to, to make it more sturdy. But then it has made it kind of too small, but I still have to block it. So that might help, but doesn't it look super cute right now? <laughs> yeah. And I do love the stitch definition with the smaller needle. Yeah. So I might do a smaller needle for the entire sock next time. Um, yeah, and so the yarn is Nicole C. Mendez from Germany. 
and the stitch marker with candy inside. I've forgotten the name again. Love florals. Uh. Mm. <laughs> it's a difficult name. <laughs> okay, so Dutch candy inside. This is by Crafts by Cloud, uh, which is a Dutch uh, web shop. I'm not sure if she has an English web shop, but it's really, really cute. I have some different. Um, uh, stitch markers by her as well uh, Yeah, and I'm using my project bag by Mama Flea And it's super cute Super cute. Yeah blues and greens and flowers and leaves. That is how I like it And I have another stitch marker on here I like to keep some extra on project bags in case that I need them and this is an upcycled uh, old earring that I had <laughs> and I wasn't going to wear these anymore so I thought to uh, turn it into a progress keeper. Earlier this week I was also looking for just a really quick project, just a really simple one. So I knit a square for my blanket <laughs> and um, I've been knitting squares for two years but I might just knit two every year so, uh, so I've knit this one. Uh, I finally used some yarn that I got from Japan uh, a couple of years ago. It is Noro. And before I went to Japan, I did not like Novo. I thought it was way too eccentric and colorful and yeah, I thought, no, it would just wasn't my style. And then I went to Japan and I saw a lot of craft stores. Oh, what are they called? Uh, they had, they had them. We were in Tokyo and they had about six or seven stores in Tokyo scattered across the city. Oh, I can't uh, think of the name right now. It has a uh, red logo with a ram and the ram is knitting and it's so cute. So I finally knit up this yarn and as you can see, it kind of has color blocks. So um, there is a color block that ends right here. And then there is a color block here, and then here, the red one, and then uh, a really dark one. And this is the rest of the skein. Yeah. So that was fun. And um, um, I started this blanket, or this blanket project, um, when I noticed that I had a lot of these chunky skeins um, and I did not know what to use them for and I would use them for hats but then the hats would be super floppy and loose and they would fall off my head <laughs> and then suddenly I decided I'm just going to knit squares with them and I've done that with those bulky souvenir single skeins and with my hand spun yarn. So these are uh, from one or two years ago. I love these colors. So this is also actually, the roving is by Craftfulness. Um, did I mention her in this episode? No, I um, um, I mentioned her in my goodies vlog. Um, I am uh, I I bought some yarn from her uh, from Sandra, who is a uh, craftfulness um, here in Friesland, in the northern part of the Netherlands, and she dyes yarn now. Uh, but back in the day, she also dyed roving. And this was my very first, well, 
after my practice skein. This was my first official hand spun skein and I did one in stockinette and one in um, garter stitch. So yes, so those were my first two squares and now I have a third and I know somewhere I have another one on the needles simply stuck on the needles for more than a year I think also out of some bulky yarn so I need to find that and um, finish it <laughs> yeah so but that was really fun this week and then for my last project which is really cute <laughs> I made a little Santa hat um, I made it for Momo for our kitten uh, to take a um, picture for our Christmas card this year and we have succeeded in taking a picture uh, although it was very stressful for little Momo so yeah <laughs> but it was very funny as well uh, so I put the hat on Momo while she was asleep and of course she was uh, she woke up instantly but she was still kind of drowsy um, and you know we had to wait for her to fall asleep because otherwise she would attack the hat and you know because she thought it was a toy the pom-pom is kind of loose right now because she pulled on it my boyfriend is Momo's favorite so uh, I thought that he would calm her down more than if I would hold her so he held her during the picture and then um, uh, I had this laser light thing and I pointed it at the camera so that she would look at the camera work like a charm and we got a few great uh, pictures so that was really cute but now I um, I have given it to Coco, who is my uh, blue tit, uh, my little, uh, well, my little, she's my XL bird. Um, yeah, I still haven't written up the pattern for this one. I only have the one for my um, Robin, but yeah, it's cute. So what I did, I cut a, um, a circle out of felt. And then, um, well, turned out that I only needed about half of it, so I could still make another one. And then I pasted, um, I kind of let them overlap, and I pasted just with some glue, I pasted in the, uh, the ends together, and then I made a little pom-pom, uh, and I uh, made an I-cord, I crocheted an I-cord. And I'm probably going to film that at some point. And then I stitched that to the hat. And I used uh, Scapies Namaste for this hat. And it's just so cute. Um, yeah, really quick make. And you can use them as decoration, right? On your soft toys um or on your pets <laughs> or on yourself yes <laughs> okay yeah and um yeah the pom-pom is kind of loose but anyway so that was really cute uh and we got some amazing pictures and I'm sure that I will show them here at some point when uh, my family had have received their Christmas cards. I don't want to spoil the surprise right now. So that's all I have to show you guys in this uh, episode. I did work on some more projects but um, my patrons will know more about that so um, I did a little free pattern for a charity project which I will share on here pretty soon I think because it's going to be public uh, but I shared it already in my patreon uh, group and um, I also talked about some swatches uh, some design swatches so 
yeah, if you want to have some designing sneak peeks, then please go ahead uh, and go over to my Patreon page. Uh, and as always, a huge thank you to all of my patrons for supporting the channel and for supporting me and my designs. It's really, really appreciated. Um, yeah, I've been really thinking about that a lot since, um, you know, the year's almost to an end. Um, and it's been almost one year now since I uh went from full-time to part-time working on my day job so as of january this year 2018 uh i went from 40 hours a week to 32 hours a week uh so i have every thursday off and i'm working on my designs here at home and i've just been thinking a lot about growing my business this year and my business has grown a lot um, and I'm super, super pleased. Um, since I started, uh, since I launched my Patreon page in August, it has grown even more um, and I'm super happy about that. And I really want that to continue for the next year. Um, yeah, I just, so happy uh, instantly when I think about my designs and my business and um, all of the people supporting me. It's just, you know, warm, fuzzy feelings. And uh, I updated my Etsy shop with some yarn uh, last week. Um, I have one lovely order um, in the back. Um, I'm going to be posting them out um, at the German post office. So um, the Dutch postal system um, is, is quite good, um, but for posting something to other, con other countries, it's quite expensive. Um, so um, only the Dutch uh, packages I will be posting via the Dutch post uh, system. Uh, it's about 650 uh, but uh, from Germany so if I post to Germany it's only 499 and if I post to um, other countries in Europe it's 889 while as from the Dutch post system it would be somewhere around 10 euro or 15 euro already and to America yeah, Dutch Post is very expensive, but the German Post is quite reasonable. So yeah, um, it's just mm, like eight kilometers from my house and I thought, okay, well, if I can help my customers um, to keep the shipping costs low by going to the German Post office once in a while, then I'm happy to do that. Um, even though sometimes they are a little bit difficult because I like to well I want to switch so I'm, I'm gonna ramble on for a little bit sorry so I have these plastic bags uh, which I use for uh, packaging my yarn and I bought those bags last year I think and afterwards everyone everyone became really uh, conscious about not using plastic and I do not plan to buy any more of those bags but for now I do want to use what I have. Um, having said that for the orders I'm posting now I have some uh, cardboard boxes um, which I received packages in so I'm going to make them a little bit pretty and, re and uh, just reuse them so I hope my customers won't mind um, but the German post system they kind of um, don't accept those plastic bags. They say, oh no, it's only for the big companies like H&M, which is stupid. But uh, I understand that if they have like machines that could tear up the bags, then okay, um, I understand that, but then don't tell me that it's only for big companies. Uh, so, uh, but anyway, that that wasn't really something that you needed to know, but I just had to get it off my chest, I guess. So I'm going over to the German post office in, um, in 
just this afternoon and I'm, I'm so looking forward to you guys receiving the yarn and thank you so much for all of your purchases. There are, there are still some yarns left in the shop so please if you're interested go ahead and take a look. I hope you find something you like and if not, no worries, I'll dye up some more sometime. Um, yeah. Oh right! Um, I forgot about one project so I did some more hand dyeing. Uh, but not on yarn. I dyed a shirt and I already showed this to my patrons but I'm gonna show it to you as well because I showed this on my one of my vlogmases. Um, I'm doing vlogmas on Instagram stories and I have this white shirt and <laughs> I dyed it with red onion skins and I got this greenish uh, greenish mustard, greenish yellow, which does not look super pretty, but um, yeah, it's wrinkled. So I'm going, I'm gonna go and iron it and see if it fits me. And um, I mean, I know that it fits, but I'm gonna see if the color goes with my wardrobe. Um, yeah. And then I'll see if I'll sew on some cute buttons. Yes, so I dyed that. <laughs> I must um, order some more yarn to use for a hand dyeing because I only have a couple of skeins left. So yes, more yarn dyeing in the future. All right, the light is going again and it's only 3 p.m. <sighs> podcast or problems yeah so I'm going to finish up and uh, put all of my projects back in their bags and then uh, we're gonna go to the German post office to post your orders okay well thank you all so so much for watching and uh, be sure to also check out my other separate vlogs if you are interested and have a very crafty couple of weeks and I see you all next time. Bye bye. <laughs> Christian. <laughs>